I came out this morning and uh, was looking all at all of this grass, clumps of grass and stuff that I had in the form. And uh, I grabbed my garden weasel. And if you've, uh, if you've ever used one of these, they are actually a pretty nice tool. But I just ran that along in through here and it would it was busting up that uh, those clumps of grass that I had and I uh, was able to kind of shake out you see how the the tines kind of break into these clods and break them up and so I was able to get most of the grass material out and leave the dirt behind uh, so that form is pretty well ready uh, We've, uh, I've raked it with this, uh, with this tool over here and got it all nice and level. You got a little bit of a low spot there where I pulled out a clump of grass, but, uh, I could take that, take this garden weasel, run across here a couple times and it just breaks the grass up and fills it in. So anyway, you see how it works. So even when you're doing cement, you can use garden tools to get the job done. So now I've uh, got some, I've got a roll of wire here. This is just some uh, two by four inch uh, uh, fencing wire. I'll cut it in pieces and uh, use that to embed within the cement. This is uh, some just fencing wire that I had. Uh, it's a little bit lighter weight wire than the other stuff that I put in those pads, but uh, it'll kind of do the same thing. It uh, really just kind of adds rigidity to the cement, um, kind of holds it together. If, uh, if it does happen to crack, um, it'll keep the pieces together. So with that, I think we're ready to pour cement. If you uh, follow my channel, uh, you can go, I uh, have a couple of videos or a video on these uh, bee catchers, these, uh, oh, <laughs> they're not bumblebees, uh, carpenter bees. And you see, it looks like I got a couple of couple of new residents in the California hotel you can check in but you can never check out so anyway 
uh, go check that video out. It explains the bee catcher and uh, and how it works and and the damage that they do to uh, unexposed wood or exposed wood. All right, it's eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, the next next day, it's supposed to be eighty degrees today. So I guess I better get my cement done before it gets hot. Okay, I'm back from Home Depot, uh, getting 16 bags of cement. And uh, while I was there at Home Depot, uh, they had a couple of bags that were uh, broken bags, 80 pound bags. And the guy that was helping me load asked me if I wanted those bags to uh, for free. Uh, so, hey, the price was right. So I went ahead and loaded them up. Uh, they're 80 pound bags, they're broken. Uh, and what I'm going to do as you see these cement pads here, uh, this is a little bit of a patio that I had poured. Uh, I need to get some weed killer out here on it. But what I plan to do is extend this on out and run along this driveway and then on over to the back door of the trailer. So uh, I think that this pour over here is gonna take 13 bags and uh, so I was going to have three bags left over to begin with. And so now I got two 80 pound bags. So I'm gonna be flush with cement. Okay, I'm all gloved up. Got my dust mask on. And the cement mixer is calling. that cement in the back which sticks on that center portion 
to uh, come off and start mixing in with the mix. And this first bag, because we're doing 60 pound bags, we do two bags at a time. This first bag, you really want it to be mixed wet. But when you add water, you want to add water in just very short spurts. Because you can, uh, you can come from really dry cement to really wet cement in a heartbeat. And so on this, we want it to be really wet, so you see how the cement's flowing. Uh, this would actually be too wet to put in the form. But we want it that way because when we put the second bag in, that bag is going to be really, it's going to make the steam really dry. So we let that mix for a while just to make sure that it's good and mixed up. We got a little bit of cement on the very back end. It's kind of sticking, but not much. All right, we'll go add our second bag. Second bag added. You see how dry it is. So we clean up our drum on the left hand side. Get all that cement that's stuck to the wall. Push down in. And again, we're directing water towards the back of the drum. And uh, I'm adding water at this point until I start seeing water puddle up at the very beginning. The very front. See how that water puddles up as soon as you add it? So I watch that. And you see how the cement is actually kind of clumpy. So that's just a little bit too dry. So we add some water to the back end. Again, short spurt. And you should watch it. And now you see the cement is starting to kind of gel together. But we still got some dry stuff that's, that's uh, kind of catching on the paddle and, and falling out. We're not quite there yet. Add just a little bit more to the back. You see how just a little bit of water and it changes the consistency of the cement altogether. Another little spurt. And we want to get that cement to a point where it is just flowing. Kind of folding over on itself. Maybe just one more spurt of water. And now we'll let that gel for a while. We'll kind of keep an eye on it. You see there's hardly any sticking to the paddle now. We're just sticking a little bit, but not much. I think if we let that mix for a while, we pretty soon you wouldn't see that. We could give that just another little shot of water, but, uh, but I'm kind of content to uh, just let that let that run for a little while, and then we'll take another look at it. But I got a pile here that I got to spread out on the street with that uh, two by four, so we'll get it done.
I'll show you what I mean by gauging the amount of cement that we have left. You see, I'm, uh, this is the center point. I'm a little bit more, probably a single bag, more than halfway. And when I look at what I've got left on, on the trailer, I've got two, four, six, eight bags left. So I started with 16 plus the, the two free ones. So, you know, I just kind of look at that, kind of pay attention to that. And, uh, and then I've got two bags in here. So two bags will bring me up to about here. And then it looks like we may end up being two more bags to uh, finish this on out. So if that's the case, then I will end up with uh, about six bags left over. Which uh, will give me a, a long way toward, see those black forms over there? I've got those already set up and uh, kind of ready to go for pouring cement to continue that walkway out. Okay, we ended up with uh, five bags of cement left over, and uh, and you saw down toward the end uh, when I put water back into the uh, cement mixer to clean it up and let it slosh around. I made sure that I didn't uh, didn't add so much that that last bag of cement was going to be uh, too wet. Uh, normally, I'd put enough cement in for almost uh, a bag and a half and it would make that cement super wet. But, uh, and then when you add the second bag in, then you just bring it up to the, the thickness that you want. But that last bag, I was gonna be one bag short, and I thought it was going to be too much, but it, as it turned out, it was, it was just about right. So now, as I've said many times before, this is a waiting game. Uh, you can see the sheen that's on the cement. Uh, so it's super wet. Uh, it was starting to dry out down on this end. And uh, I got my float out. The float is this. And it's just a wooden paddle. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of wood that is, but it's a wooden paddle. Had it for, I've had it forever. And um, it's called a float. And you use it to do your first finish on the cement. I don't always use it, but kind of depending on uh, how the surface of the cement is looking. Um, now recently, uh, I've seen a lot of cement people, uh, different videos that I've watched, they would take uh, some dry cement, just, just straight cement out of the bag, and they would dust that across the top and um, would uh, provide another layer of cement on the top and then when it finishes it would finish really smooth uh, but this is i want this to be just like the the others over here so uh, i'm like i said i'm not a professional cement guy uh, i just hope it holds together 
to do what I want it to do. All right, we'll come back uh, when we start edging this and uh, I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so the cement now is really starting to look pretty good. It, uh, the uh, water has pretty well evaporated off the top. It is uh, right now 11.30, about 11.40, and we stopped pouring at uh, 10:30. So this cement's actually drying pretty fast. We got uh, we got clear skies and we got a lot of sun beating down. And uh, so so now we're going to take this tool and we're going to do edges. Um, and I'll set you up to watch that. rocks down along the edge that are uh, kind of tough to work in but the first the first run that you make you're kind of pushing rocks down and then you just kind of come back and forth and smooth it out and you just move on around see where I took the uh, parting tool and ran across here to create that expansion uh, joint. Uh, what I did prior to doing that, I had uh, measured this overall length, uh, out, outside form to outside form. I was nine, nine feet, nine inches. So, you know, I didn't have to be exact uh, on it. Uh, so I measured out uh, about a third of that and I put a mark on the form uh, and then came down here, put another mark on the form right there. Came over to the other side, did the exact same thing. And so that was my starting point for putting these expansion uh, spots, uh, slots in. So that gives me a nice one third, one third, one third. And it makes a nice, 
nice finish to the cement. Now I will let this really dry for a couple of hours and uh, won't do anything more to the edges. I, I've kind of learned over time that kind of the least is better. If you keep working it, uh, all you do is keep exposing rocks. And uh, so we'll let this sit and then we will come back and we'll hit this with the trowel a little bit, each one of these squares, and then we'll be done.